Welcome to Talking Time with Caffeine, the only podcast where we take a subject and just talk about it for however long we have to talk about it. I can say hello to our kind of sponsor, Junebug Films. Yep, got a sponsor now, kind of. Woo! Yay. Oh, a sponsor. That's awesome. I see him in your uh, side chat too. Thank you for sponsoring our stream, June Bug Films. Jesus, uh, this restream has changed a lot since last last a week ago. <laughs> but anyways, in case you in case you don't know who you guys are, introduce yourselves. I'm uh, Bree. <laughs> Oh, go ahead. I, I just want to ask uh, whether you want to go first, but you, you, you go oh. first. Yeah, sure. I'm Bree, uh, Bumble Bree. I have a YouTube channel called Hive Science, mostly based around uh, skepticism and uh, debunking bad science. So if you're interested in that sort of stuff, come on over. We do cryptozoology and alien encounters. We do uh, young earth creationism and... Uh, yeah, we uh, and then we do some uh, real science too. Just today, we were talking about the uh, St. Bathans Formation in New Zealand, a wonderful fossil formation. So, if you're interested, go check that out from this morning, live from the hive. And we are there every Saturday morning, so certainly feel free to drop in and uh, say hello. Uh, I'm so happy to be here to talk about uh, the evolution of hymenopterans and insects. And yeah, let's do it. <laughs> And I am uh, Nestlick, well, you can call me Ness for short. And I mostly work with uh, Jackson Wheat for his videos. And sometimes I'm also appear here as a guest as well. And t today again. But this time we're going to talk about a uh, diff like last time I was talking about uh, gymnosperms. But this time we have a new topic. Yep. I always ahead of the curve, mm -hmm. kind of. But anyways, I got this idea, I think, either from one of Bree's Life from the Hive sh shows or some, or it could have been just some random time you decided to uh, just post a live video, not on, not on Saturday. But you were talking about the, the war of the native bees versus the invas invasive bees here, here, in, here in America. Yeah, yeah, I was uh, talking about that uh, yeah, the honeybee is not uh, native to North America. It's uh, it's it's a, not a uh, a benefit to the to the natural ecology either. Uh, they're, they're essentially free ranged uh, uh, livestock that have gone uh, feral and mostly supplanted the in indigenous population. Uh, there's a a few bee species hanging on but native bees which are uh, largely stingless and some of them are so tiny that like little flies there there's a v wide variety of them which we will probably get into in just a bit here but uh yeah they they are struggling and now you see all these save the bees campaigns with honeybees on the is the image of the save the bees campaign and that's really uh, counterproductive since honeybees are more of the problem than the and the victim of uh, of the insect yeah, decline. Eat the native bees to make something that we, that we want to eat ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> no, native bees. Uh, they some of them do make honey, but not anything that would be commercially uh, viable for for us to uh, make an industry on it. For it to have any agricultural significance, that it uh, native uh, bee honey, it would be like a uh, exotic commodity like, are, are also the, uh, the honey bees that we use are they also uh, largely domesticated or are there like wild counterparts to the european honey bee that are more or less the same or are there main are there significant differences between the wild and the the, 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 the ones we use for production uh, mostly just behaviorally um mm -hmm like in the way that they uh that they act towards humans 
they've been uh, conditioned to uh, the domestic ones have been conditioned through generations to tolerate us. Honeybees were actually domesticated fairly early on. You're talking uh, Old Kingdom Egypt. We have talk of uh, mm. bee domestication and honey, a honey industry at that time. So, did they originate in uh, the Middle East uh, or or in Europe? So the 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 honeybees that were originally domesticated in Egypt. Are mm -hmm. not the same species that we have domesticated now. All right. So they started domesticating them in Egypt, but apiaries that you know are found in the, yeah, like you said, the Middle East, uh, the the Near East, uh, Southern Europe into the Mediterranean area, is where we really start to see the European honeybees being domesticated. Uh, the uh, monks d played a huge, just like they did with uh, domestication of the goldfish, played a, and domestication of the rabbits, for that matter, played a huge role in, in uh, what species that we see, you know, in the uh, in, in the agricultural industry today. Mm -hmm. but, but, but it, it was the same species that the, the Egyptians uh, domesticated, or was it a slightly different species that the Egyptians? Domesticated. It was a different species of honey. Mm. But yeah. and, and we'll get into it eventually. But the funny thing about invasive bees, we did it twice. First, we brought over the European bees, and then we're like, nah, not, that's not good enough. Let's bring over the African bees, too. Yeah. yeah. And somebody was thinking, yeah. hmm, perhaps we could, perhaps it would be a good idea to uh, hybridize the European honeybee with the African uh, bee, and nope, it was not a good idea at all. Yeah, yeah. I'm just glad it did not get cold, hot enough, warm enough that much to get, get them all the way up to Ohio. Of uh, the Africanized uh, killer, the the killer bees. Yeah, they got killer bees and murder hornets, and they love. They got all these lovely names for them. Oh yeah, that, that reminds me. I love. When, when people thought the murder hornets were trying to kill us, but no, they're they're killing the bees. The killer bees are, are the same way. That's that that's the thing about killer bees. They try to make it out like they're going to be stinging the people, but the main the main concern with Africanized honeybees is that they uh, overrun and uh, kill European honeybee colonies and supplant them with their own, and then their own colonies are not uh, able to be to be harvested because of their aggressive nature and we never yeah. our bees apparently never learned to uh stop invading vain hornets by making turn by boiling them alive <laughs> yeah it's the japanese subspecies that can do that the japanese uh honeybees we, we, then we just gotta get a third invasive species and breed them all together <laughs> Yeah, but, African, European, Japanese bees, all one big combination. Really, really American, even more. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, we've brought over bees, domestic, domestic bees were brought to the Americas in, in like 1620, one of the earliest of oh, uh, like livestock. Like, like, with the, like with Plymouth? Yeah, it's like it, it, the original 13 colonies, they had uh, apiaries. Apiaries were, have always been. Uh, part of European society since medieval time, uh, collecting and harvesting honey has been the. Uh... Ooh, are we ready to get into the slides? Yeah, well, so I, I know I get off topic talking about the cultural that, impact, that's but what, that's what we can I say. Hear. Yeah, I. But that, that, and that's my that's my uh, where I really like to discuss is the cultural impact and the mm -hmm. ecological movements. We'll probably, that, get, we'll probably uh, can do yeah. that with each neutral slide if you have time. But, yeah, but first of sure. all, the title. What's the what is that? What does hymenoptera mean? If you know, hymen is uh, well. It's a reference to the reproductive organs, actually. Uh, uh, it's the same root word that uh, is a hymen, like uh, like when you talk about virginity, but um, has a, a I believe that's a Greek origin to that yeah, uh, yeah. prefix. Uh, I I looked. I'm going to go ahead. So you finish first. Sorry. Oh, me. I was going to say uh, it, it, it does. Uh, 
uh, kind of uh, carry the weight of their weaponized genitalia is what I was going to say. <laughs> so that's what a stinger is in, in, on bees, ants, and wasps. It's, it's weaponized genitals. So. It is, that's maybe also that may be also a good uh, reason, but I, I looked up the etymology and it's a bit it's a bit confusing too. It's not, it's not really very clear why it's called this. Like like there, there are two parts of this word, uh, hymen obviously, and mm -hmm. uh, and terra. Terra is referring to the wing of the mm -hmm. insect. And hymen the, wing. What, yeah, basic, basically, yeah, and. And the hymen has many different usages in Greek. Like it, uh, it can mean a membrane, as in the membrane that it, that also, uh, yeah, uh, young uh, uh, people. Some pe some people have it uh, in their genitals, of course, as, as you ma mentioned mm -hmm. before. But it can also refer, in this case, it can also refer to the membranous wings of uh, wasps and bees. Mm -hmm. But also, uh, there, there is also another. Uh, a uh, thing that uh, has been claimed it's it may refer to the way that the uh, the wings of these species are like the, 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 the front wings and the back wings and these two are connected by hooks in uh, hymenopterans so an, an hymen has often also been used to refer to marriage so basically it it basically means a joint or married wings it could also mean that way as well by referring to how the how the front and back wings are hooked together. Oh yeah, I was just be my my definition was ad hoc. Nessus Nessus yeah. is the correct. I was just ad hocing on there that uh, it, it works in hindsight to them yeah. having the the modify mm -hmm. the most of the females and in, in eusocial uh, hemenopterans. Any of them that have stingers are not you know, generally uh, uh, going to be reproductive because those are modified reproductive organs that have turned into a stinger instead now is this the clay maybe other clay too but is this the clay that decide we want to have a monarchy yeah these are the uh so these are the eusocial insects the only other ones i can think of outside of hemonopterans are termites which are in bladder day and they have a, a different kind of social structure for their hierarchy yeah. is uh they uh but within human Termi termites are also uh termites are also uh within the cockroach group mm -hmm. they are actually yep. cockroaches yeah so nested right so, so a day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but because of their unique ability to digest certain cellulose that uh there's ants that can they can break it down, but none of them can digest it quite like a termite can. Mm -hmm. uh, they, that's they, a, and they use they use uh, fun, fungi for that to help them uh, break down the plants. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Let's, let's see. Start. You want to move on to that next slide? Uh, talk let's about where are where where we are oh, on the uh, tree of life. So. Here we are. We got uh, the common ancestor to all arthropods, all right? Mm -hmm. And then we got uh, the trilobites with their calcium-rich uh, remains that we have uh, such a, a, a massive fossil record of that we we use them to measure time in the Paleozoic. And it cuts and it separates out chelicerates, which are surviving. We have. Uh, living arachnids and uh, horseshoe crabs, but it gets a lot more complicated than that when you go back into the Paleozoic record. But we're not here to talk about spiders. That's, that's another story. <laughs> if you're interested, though, me and Aaron Ra did a great uh, series on it, a four-part series that was, like, uh, breaking it down from, the, from this point on. So, yeah, very similar to yeah, what we're doing the, today. The, the Creepy Crawler series. <laughs> yeah. And you get uh, then we get uh, myriopods. This this branch going off to the to the right here is uh, from common ancestor is uh, mandibulata, right? So everything mm -hmm. yes. from this on this side has mandibles. It's not labeled here, but we, but that's what that first branch is. And then you, you uh, we I believe we'll have uh, it's got 
myriopods here on the branching off to the left, but there should also be, oh, I'm not going to worry about that right now. The, I was going to say the uh, rimipedes uh, branching off before that too, but that's like a very, very niche grouping. And again, we're not here to talk about those. And then you get into pan crustacea. Uh, pan crustacea is uh, what used to be divided into di to different groups with insects being outside of crustacea. But now, now we know, don't we, guys, that insects are just crustaceans. They're just they're just crabs that learn to live on land. Hmm. <laughs> although, although, although they, they the, the the group that includes the crabs and and lobsters are still still distantly related to the insects. Like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, like crab is think, such a funny word because yeah, I, I think like a you you have very very uh, like very uh, how do you how do you, how do you call it Obs very obscure uh, crustaceans like the triops. Mm -hmm. and I think the triops are more closely related to the insects, if not if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I think it's uh, this one he has up here in the crustacean yeah. section here that they got it divided off. Uh, that's a triop, and they're they are close mm -hmm. related to insects, but they've been yes. you know historically classified as crustaceans, uh, mostly because of their anatomical features that they retain, oh. such as like gills and things like that. Not that uh, insects. Uh, that there are insects that retain uh, some basal features. Uh, if you want to pop on to the, the, is it the, what will be the next slide? Yeah. Next slide, we're talking about biomes, but I yeah. I do that. I got two things. So I've got a question uh -huh. in chat. But what is it with bees and sugar? Cause they were attracted to my soda. They make their honey out of sweet stuff. You can, they, mm -hmm. there's bees that they've, Ha they've got to make uh, make honey out of like grape soda and stuff like that. There's grape soda honey that they've made. It's kind of funny. Uh, honey pot the ants are also an interesting uh, topic uh, to talk I, about. I see those. They, 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 they have the big social stomachs. Like mm -hmm. fat ones. The, like, don't, don't bees get into trouble like when they uh, when they use oh, like purified syrup that doesn't have as many uh, protein, for example. They they lack. They don't get enough of the other nutrients when they only uh, take up like these purified syrup solutions. So they, they, they need. Uh, yeah. They need they a variety of nectar. Yeah. Yeah, because they could run into that same problem when they try to get them to pollinate uh, monocultures too. Uh, the the hive can't thrive off of one type of uh, of nectar even. It needs, mm -hmm. it needs a variety. It's just like what you need in your diet. They need the same thing. You know, nectar from this flower may be a little bit different than the nectar from that flower. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, but yeah, I, I, I have, like I, I like I once I bought a, uh, a, a a specific type of honey that was made from uh, brassica pollen, like uh, for, for like in, in this it's completely white. Oh yeah, completely That's white. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> And also, we we brought think we brought this up in our protostone protostone episode, but I might be wrong here. But I think the trilobites are the only ones that never made it to land. These other ones have made it to land at least. I think so. Yeah, I think I don't remember any trilobites that have been found on terrestrial environments. You know what? I would not ever. Yeah. I would not be surprised if we did find some. But I don't. Yeah, I maybe. Yeah. Think of any. <laughs> Yeah, I would, because uh, we found you know there's there was terrestrial eurypterids and things like that. So, who knows? Mm -hmm. But uh, we're gonna but, go down that insect branch yep, from but, here. Yep, going zooming in a little bit more, we have. Mm -hmm. Now we talk about some uh, some biomes here where decapods dominated the ocean, but uh, as we just discussed, insects are actually in our descendants from some ancestors descendants from. Decopods, so uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, no, the, oh, no, the, the, the decopods are a sep like a separate group. Uh, like like uh, the, the decopods include the lobsters and the cross and the uh, the crabs, and then you can see also like one other group is the uh, of crustaceans, the branchiopods. That, that's the one that includes mm -hmm. the triops. Yep, those yeah, the one and, that yeah. was on the same branch as the insect. Yeah. And here in the, I believe this is a fire brad it has here for hexapods uh, in the green. 
It might be a. Mm-hmm. It might suppose they they may be trying to be a, a, to present a silver fish, but see, there it's one or the other. Uh, this artistic rendering. I'm gonna call it a fire brat. There's fire brat, silver fish, and um, oh my gosh, now I can't think of it. It's gonna drive me. Dales. Uh, springtails springtails oh, spring that's the word. thank right. you yes yes uh yeah deca uh so when i say decapods i mean it, the insects had ancestors with 10 legs before they came oh, yeah, on land yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah i didn't yeah the clay so. decapod yeah. is a reverse reserved for specific groups of crustaceans mm-hmm mm-hmm and in, in even the decapods within the decapods some have also lost uh, many legs as well in, in within mm-hmm. that group too it's, it's just a it's just a name that like 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 even in our group the tetrapods the four-legged vertebrates many have lost mm-hmm. their feet as well yeah and then there's yeah. uh isopods which also talk, are another group of crustaceans that managed to conquer land and the farthest depths of the ocean i wish there were oceanic uh hymenopterans but uh unfortunately they're not Hymenopterans have uh, uh, evolved f- to a completely terrestrial lifestyle. Uh, you can tell by the fact that they see so many of them floating in your swimming pool. But mm-hmm. they're <laughs> uh, they're grouped into uh, so in Hymenoptera there are the uh, Ants, bees, and wasps, uh, basically uh, apocrita. But there's also, before you get to that line, there are the sawflies, which are pretty unique little uh, little creatures. They do look a lot like flies. Um, they have generally uh, phytovores uh, larvae, which uh, live inside of leaves, uh, often called uh, leaf miners or leaf borers. Uh, you can see their little doodle bug trails on some uh, species of tree leaf. Uh, when they mature, they're they're fairly tiny, about the size of a. Most of them are fairly tiny, about the size of a fly. There's some bigger ones that live in coniferous forests. Uh, they they've carved out a specialized niche there to uh, to thrive in that type of environment. So they get a little bit bigger in those clades, but they're sort of the out group of uh of hymenopterans all the rest of them have one thing in common and that's that they're descendant from parasites mm-hmm. yeah also uh about the the question uh, uh many bees are reluctant to sting do many bees uh, not die or not lose their uh, stinger okay do you know uh, about or do, do do most bees lose their stinger or only one type of bee you know what's funny to say most bees don't sting or don't have stingers it's only mm. uh, certain groups that that uh, retain that sting prowess if you will they uh uh, and, and yeah, they the bees. When it comes to bees, they generally die because they're eusocial. Uh, the warriors uh, are not so much concerned about their own individual life because they are part of a uh, larger, uh, almost like a. I don't want to. I don't want to call it a, a clonal organism, but it's about the closest that you're going to get, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so they don't. So it doesn't matter if they die. Basically, is what it comes down to. Uh, and they know it doesn't matter if they die. That they that they as in their genetic profile will go on. Yep, we are now in the Devonian. But let's oh. zoom in a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Yep. So we're de- we're in Hexapoda, we're looking at six legged organisms. Uh, Terry Goda, which is uh, going to encompass our uh, uh, dragonflies and uh, damselflies under o- uh, Odonata, uh, the uh, Neoterrans, which is the pretty much everything else. I mean, the new wings, uh, the, all their ancestors are, are uh, def- descendant from four winged uh flying insects but neo terra have uh, a common lineage where and you're talking about diptera hemiptera mm-hmm. hemiptera uh everything except for the primitive 
dragonflies, the mayflies, and of course the like silverfish and things that they're silverfish fire brats and uh springtails are the ones that never had wings. Their ancestors never had wings, they diverged off before that. And then you get into Terry Goda, which is the uh, uh development of four wings or so there's some uh did you did you have some slides that showed the wing development too? I think oh yeah, yes, the, 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 okay. these are slides and that go further in. But uh, before yeah. now, like I uh, for here, there are I, I show I highlighted some some of the non-insect mm -hmm. exopods, like the, the, the springtails, the the, the two the two pronged bristletails and the cone heads. These Silver are like fish, yeah, and these are these are these are, these are not very. Uh, uh, I don't know how common they are, but uh, they are very obscure. Like you wouldn't notice these, uh, on, unlike the insects, of course. The, the insects yeah. are uh, a more, a more a, a, the biggest subset of the hexopods, of course. Yeah, it's amazing that you, when you actually look at this, how many things are, aren't exact aren't insects that people think are insects. Mm -hmm. Well, everything everything on here is an insect, I believe. Oh. oh no no it's a uh, it's uh, like the like you can see on the on the base the you see hexapoda oh you yeah you three, have... yeah three branches come going off it and two branches going off on, on to the left are not insects but the one branch going to the right is is insecta okay i i see what we have here it's got springtails mm -hmm. springtails are uh maybe i'm using springtails wrong maybe i'm thinking of bristle uh, the, maybe the, i'm thinking of bristle tails which uh, the, the, are the, that, uh, well, like if I may interject, like you have uh, two groups. This one is the springtails, but you also have jumping springtails, which are insects. It's confusing, I know. It's it's very confusing. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah. The jumping get, springtails yeah. are insects. Yeah. And those those are the ones that they sell on the uh, like when you're trying to. You can buy cups of those online to. Uh, yeah. I I, I, I want vitalize to... your vivariums. I watch this. Ch I watch this channel on Saturdays before I watch a breeze channel. It's all about making ant farms and stuff, and they they put springtails in their ant things so that they mm -hmm. eat the ants' garbage. <laughs> right. Yeah, their cleanup crew, like isopods, uh, bristle tails. There's so fire brats live like they're the uh, animal that we found living the deepest in the earth is fire brats so that's an interesting uh uh group of these uh hexapodal creatures as well um, let me see how how deep down was that uh how long ago was the extra i think the last common ancestors maybe in the silurian of hexapods like maybe according to molecular dates i i think yeah I think so. Maybe or maybe maybe early the Devonian at the latest. The, 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 the Devonian is when the insects uh, came onto land within that period. Or, or yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Some people will mix up fire brats and uh, silverfish too, but fire brats are tend to be a little bit smaller. And I see one of these lines are no longer with us. Oh yeah, yeah. There's a very like there's a like it, it, within that uh, uh, we also get some of it at later, but you have this group called the Terrigota. These are these are the, the winged insects. You have like one extinct group of winged insects too. Yep. They're no longer F with us. F in the chat for our fallen. Can't pronounce it. The mm. <laughs> Terrigota means um, like you. Uh, I think um, uh, it refers Terry's to wings. The, yeah. Terry's the wing. Yeah. Same as the Terra. Yeah. Uh, no, 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 yeah. Pterosaurs, too. Same yeah. etymology, I think. Ky yeah. Chiroptera is what they call it, is bats. Means wing. Mm -hmm, yeah. yeah. Hand wing is what that means. Yeah. Yes. Chiropractors gets the same. Oh my gosh. Now we're going to start talking about all the. <laughs> all, I, I love talking well, about this. This could be a whole. Yeah. This, this could be a whole mini series if we, if we, if we have time. <laughs> but I think we can, yeah, we can move on to the next slide. Oh, I, I just include so, like some of the uh, uh, an interesting paper about the developmental uh, uh, genes that are involved in the transition towards six legs. Like as you mentioned before, the crustaceans have originally had many, many legs, 
but in the evolution of the hexapods, you had uh, the uh, a change in the regulatory function of some hox genes, like a UBX and the abdominal A in particular. In the hexapods, they repress a gene called uh, distalus in the abdomen, which meant that insects and, and their hexapod relatives don't develop uh, legs on their abdomen. Oh, they only have legs on their thorax. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Yeah. Oh, and I do want to mention about, because we have uh, onic forens on here, and I want to say that the, the, the velvet worms, uh, their legs are, they're not actually legs, they're like pseudopods. Uh, the, they're, the genes that, that form them are, are uh, yeah, hox are the the hox genes as well, but uh, I have to. I would have to go back and look at my, me and uh, Aaron's video on that. But if I say me, like I, like I didn't anything besides research stuff. But um, the the same genes are that, that generate that or that generate those pseudopods are are found in insects when they're in their larval stage. So it's uh, the uh, Embryo embryology of mm -hmm. the development of velvet worms and the development of insects in their larval form is very, very interesting to look into. And some of the x-rays of their eggs, even species that don't look like uh, anything like a, uh, like a velvet worm look a lot like a velvet worm when they're developing. We can move oh. on to the next slide, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, this is going on in the uh, hawk stuff. So is this, I do like this this slide, though. Uh, is this the actual genes? Yeah, I um, think, uh, it, although, although this, is a, this, is, this is a fairly fairly old paper. It's from 2002, but uh, yeah. I, I haven't seen any recent paper paper that contradicts this story perhaps it's perhaps, a good visual course, anyway. it's, all more complex. It, it, it's always more complex in reality but it is a i think it is a very important factor in the developmental evolution too only yeah. one of these clades has snot cannons to trap their prey though oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> all right next next slide all right, we're getting into insecta. Here we go. It's a, it's a very uh, blurry image. Like I uh, later, like in the next, I could I have included a better image about the phylogeny of the insects. So maybe I can. Or do you, do you want to use this slide or the next slide? Uh, I have a couple please. of things to say about this slide before we move mm -hmm. on. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Um, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Just that. Earwigs uh, have wings, really cool wings too. Some of the coolest wings with the most folds uh, in the animal kingdom. That they can. That's why they don't look like they have wings because they fold them up so good. Uh, and I don't. I, the only reason I mentioned that here is because I didn't see earwigs on the on any of the upcoming slides. So I wanted to make mm. sure they got some love because they are uh, very unique in the, uh, in the insect world. Uh, and th the fact that they, they can fly was completely unknown to me until fairly recently. I think they are called uh, Dermaptera, apparently, like in this in this slide. Derma Dermaptera. It, it, it means derma skin, 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 skin wing. Hmm. Mm -hmm. So they is there a reason for that? Uh, why they are called skin, uh, skin wings? I don't want to uh, assume the entomology behind it mm. so I, 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 yeah. I can't say but the fact that their wings fold out like the way they do might have something to do with it or maybe very... like do do like do 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 uh, all of them uh, fly or uh, do have, have many of them lost uh, flight in earwigs as far as I'm aware all the earwigs are capable of flight hmm all right I mentioned this I think I mentioned this in our wing episode, but I'll bring it up again. These guys don't have to, have to modify one of their forelimbs like the pterosaurs, dinosaurs, and bats did. At least was, most of them didn't. They got a, a pair of wings in their back. We, we, didn't have, we didn't have that 
us as Rudibus didn't get that privilege. Yeah, the uh let's see with uh we have the Eformaterans, Mayflies, uh Odonata, which is the dragonflies and damselflies. They all don't have wings that don't fold is uh is what they have in common. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you got kind of a, a step down. You got from uh, wingless, never had wings at all, which is your, uh, your there we see bristle tails and uh, zygentoma and silverfish, and then you have uh, ones that have wings but they don't fold. They either uh, dragonflies and griffinflies, which there are there aren't any griffinflies left, but they all had wings that, that that not only do they not fold up, but they lay flat no matter what. Whereas with uh, uh, ephemera and may are the mayflies and uh damselflies, their wings can fold up when they're at rest. Uh, another interesting thing about dragonflies, and just why we're here, is that they you know, dragonflies can't really walk like their legs, are, they, they, they don't walk, <laughs> they, oh, they really? can just stand, yeah, like helicopter. <laughs> All I right, they're just we... la landing legs, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so according to at least according to this chart. Apparently, the butterflies and stuff are 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 our topic's current closest living relatives. Yeah, well, and you'll see that with the similarities between uh, the very primitive, the what we talked about with the uh, with the sawflies, sawflies, and uh, the very primitive members uh, called caddisflies. They have a lot of characteristics that uh, it's similar between the two of them and the way that their larvae live. So it's not surprising that they would, that with their larvae having similar, with the basal members of the group with their larvae having similar lifestyles, that they would be closer related. That actually kind of checks out. <laughs> All right, next slide. I actually I love this slide by the way. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Did you did you pull this one or yeah, yeah I I, I, found, I found this a very good image from although you, you it's the one downside you cannot see the the names of all of each group. Uh it's this one downside. But you can see a, a big overview of how how the insects I would love are, to have uh, a poster of this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um and you can see it what we were just talking about on here too with the uh, bees trying to get a closer look at it. I don't know if it's actually if, if my eyes are blurring or if the image is just super blurry. I the, the, the image is just very, it's, it's very like the original image is very large, so I, I had to, <laughs> to, uh, <laughs> had compress to compress it, it down, down. To, yeah, to yeah. For, for to fit it in the slide. So, yeah, it's so uh, it's one sort of downside, but you can see there are. Like three, like these are all the insects, and insects are defined like uh, in 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 the the modern classification. They are defined by having external mouth parts, and there are two main divisions. Uh, one one is a, par a paraphyletic group called the uh, the A pterygota, which are which are the the wingless group, and they also they also don't have uh, uh, metamorphosis. Uh, a pterygota is in red. Yeah. Here. Yes, it's in it's in red. They, they they don't have metamorphosis and they also don't have wings. And the and the groups in that are colored uh, blue and green, they are the, the pterygota. They have the winged the winged insects. And the difference see, between yeah. And then we get to the difference between uh, the blue and the green, is the when the ones in the blue are born, they have mm. like a uh, a fully functional uh, uh, arthropod body, whereas the ones on the uh, in the green have a soft body larval stage. So that's the uh, that's the difference between these ones, and they go through a. Uh, pupil metamorphosis generally they go through a mm. pupil stage so are or, all of these lines living living lines i no, think so yeah the, they, all, they all continue down or they all continue up to the modern the modern time so i think they are all yeah extent 
That's the word. I stand, I stand corrected. I thought I saw griffin flies on there, but I guess I was looking at the mayfly and dragonfly wrong. All right. Yeah. This would make an awesome poster for the hive. Just saying. Mm. <laughs> also, uh, here I've given like one recent paper about the the, 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 the Evo Devo of the, the mm. evolution of insects. Like the, the evolution of insect wings has been uh, hotly discussed. Mm -hmm. Like there are like there were there were several hypotheses. Like one hypothesis was that they have been they are modified uh, gills, and the gills the gills of insects develop on the uh, the upper parts of their legs, if I remember correctly. But an alternative hypothesis was that they that the wings develop from the margins of the uh, the body, basically. But in this paper, they looked at the developmental expression of genes and they conclude that it's uh, both hypotheses are right they had the wings evolved from uh, a merger of these two distinct uh, tissues from the leg and and from the body uh, i i knew that they that the hox was the hox 2 gene right i think so yes yeah it was but there are several in... there are several yeah, there are several genes uh, shown here and the, the expression patterns i cannot i cannot read exactly what these are called again it's a uh oh if oh i can zoom in for myself i i see i see uh vg i see knob and ap although i'm not familiar with uh, many of these genes but you can see the, the names of the genes in the image yeah yes. all right I, yeah i don't know i don't have too much to add on to this it's really or oh you moved on sorry i was still looking at the last slide in my sorry <laughs> We get the Terry Goda, and then you get to, uh, Paleoterra and Neoterra. Paleoterra, mm -hmm. like we were just talking about, they uh, don't don't fold their wings up. Their wings are uh, they are also the oldest flying animals on Earth. <laughs> yes. So, so and they are they are paraphyletic. Like the, some are more closely related to the uh, the Neoterra. And some are more distantly, right? Yes. Yeah. I think you can also you can also see like one like in the image you can see one one of the extinct crops, the paleo paleo dicto terra. Yes. I don't think you yes. any, any of these things, but I think I, can, and also, I, don't, I, don't, I also don't know if it's, if it's on play or not, but I've seen that some insects only have three stages while others have four. Yes, it's like some like some of the extinct uh, winged insects had f f uh, six wings, right? Like they also yeah. develop. Uh, uh, no, I, I, meant, have... I meant I meant of life. I meant so, some have some have pupil, uh, uh, larval pupil and adult. Other ones have like like this nymph and adult. They skip the pupil stage altogether. Well, so the the their nymph stages are generally broken down into two uh, what they call instars, which mm -hmm. are uh, okay. just the uh, small uh, larger versions of uh of or it starts off with a like a uh, you might call it a neonate uh version of an adult uh maybe with some certain features not as expressed and as they grow and molt like the bodies the body layout stays pretty much the same though they might develop secondary uh, uh adult features or section secondary sexual characteristics when they reach a certain stage and some of them, the the uh, female goes through more in stars than the uh, than the male would. But I also think that Vandalia was mentioning that some, like some insects, uh, they uh, they don't develop into adults. They remain basically larva. Like I think there's like one uh, one group of beetles that. Like the, the female, the female do, doesn't develop into the adult form. I think. Yeah. So the yeah. Ima having having the imago stage be that that's uh we think that we think that way because we're uh you know we're uh vertebrates and that's how it is with vertebrae that you spend the most time in your adult form, but for like beetles especially, uh beetles sometimes spend orders of magnitude longer in their larval form. The majority of their life is as a larva in the adult form may not even eat in a lot of insect well, clades. And it's just a reproductive form and serves no purpose. It's a short lived 
It's some in some species, it's the only time during their development that they actually have wings is during the adult stage where they don't eat and all they have to do can do is reproduce. I know of a longhorn beetle species that can spend up to 40 years in its larval stage before maturing out to an adult that only lives for a matter of months. Yeah. It's also, it's also the case like many, uh, that there are, there are some uh, moths that uh, when, when they are adults, they don't have any way of uh, consuming food so they are they are basically are starving to death after they have turned into the adult form and they, 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 their only goal in life is to reproduce and they, they never eat anymore they only eat when they are uh, larva yep their larva is the primary stage of their life where they spend most yeah. of their time or they do most of their living that's also they that's why they eat so much that's why larval stages are always munch 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 because when they reach an adult stage many of these clades don't have the ability to eat at all or don't have the ability to eat as much mm -hmm. uh, mantises uh, are a clade that uh, that have wings as adults but don't generally have wings as uh, the smaller uh, smaller forms but other than that they're, they're in their infant forms their neonate forms look essentially like the adults it's going through slight variations as they grow variation over time yeah just, about, that, the, about the question that's not that's now shown here about the uh, many insects only have wing, wings in males i i'm i am familiar mm -hmm. with one called the velvet ant where the uh, <laughs> the females are wingless and only the males have wings yeah the vel velvet ants and they are, and, and the velvet ants are not actually ants, uh, actually. So they are, not, they are called, uh, yeah, they're called velvet ants, but they are not ants. The ground wasp. I used to have some in the in the hive. They have a really, really long stinger. The females are completely fight, flightless. There's some mantises too, where the females um, don't fly and the males fly. Uh, some uh, stick insects as well, where the females don't fly and the males do fly. And some stick insects where the females don't have wings and the males have wings, but they don't fly, but their wings can be for display. So how's that for yeah. some uh, some variation across kinds? <laughs> yeah, and it's also it's also interesting to note that like, uh, oh, okay, can you go, go back uh, for, for, for a few moments? Thank you. Uh, like most insects have four four wings, or at least the, the original insect, like like the uh, the dragonflies have four wings. But uh, many groups have specialized uh, the, some set of wings. Like the, like the beetles have specialized the front set of wings into the uh, elytra. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, basically, it's it's only only acts as the uh, the cover that protects the hind wings. And in the flies, the hind wings are modified into halteers, and they. Yeah. And if I if I correct if I if I'm correct, the the halteers in flies are used to like as a gyroscope basically to mm -hmm. to uh, uh, detect uh, uh, movement to maintain balance in flight. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of funny how the beetles and the fly both went in kind of opposite directions on that. Mm -hmm. Although the elytra can also uh, serve as a, a defensive feature as well, so it has it has yeah. dual purposes. Um, mm -hmm. You know, yeah. certain uh, certainly uh, uh, the fangs of a spider uh, have more trouble penetrating in the, the elytra. Uh, now there's a there's a, this wild uh, Russian. Uh, uh, conspiracy that the elytra of beetle wings actually has anti-gravity properties. Did I ever tell you guys about that? <laughs> I have never heard about that. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, a, a topic for another time. It's hilarious. You'll get a kick out of it. But, Let's yeah. see. Next, we go to ho 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 yeah, a, like a, these are, these are more, more uh, better images for to illustrate the differences between the developmental patterns observed in insects. Yeah, you like as, as I mentioned before, the uh, the, the, the earliest insects uh, that, that don't have wings are uh, so called a metabolus, they don't have any, uh, uh, they don't have metamorphosis, they are distinguished as to, like after they are hatched from the egg, they are juveniles, and the juveniles are basically just miniature 
versions of the adults. There's little develop little morphological differences between the adults and the uh, the juveniles. But when you move into the uh, the winged insects, the pterygoids, you see that the uh, the nymphs are uh, ringless, and the adults, like uh, after an, uh, after many nymph stages called the instars, you the, the adults eventually develop the wings in the in the uh, the hemi, the partial met, uh, partial metamorphosis, the uh, also called hemi metabolus. Yeah, that's and that's the instars that we were just discussing. Yes. Yeah, the hemi hemi metabolus. Uh, they go through. Is it is it describes there? These insects grow larger in stages, adding new features when they reach maturity. That's like the wings in an adult mantises, and then yeah, you have the hollow metabolus where each uh, each stage of its life is uh, very different and unique, uh, and has uh, specific anatomical features that are not present uh, in the other forms that it takes. Uh, this is a, the this is a perfect example of it. Here is the butterfly uh, going through that. Now, one thing that stands out to me about this, though, is I always would have thought that, or I, I would have thought that uh, dragonflies would count as hollow metabolus because their their instars uh, are very different. Hmm. Mm. They're also super primitive, so you know what I'm uh, saying. Have you, you ever seen a dragonfly nymph? They're pretty. Uh, I, I have I have seen videos of uh, dragonfly uh, nymphs, and they are horrifying. <laughs> yeah, they have the retractable like uh, they have the jaws like the aliens on uh, mm -hmm. on Alien. Yeah, they're for yeah. They they, they they seem more vicious in their nymph stage than they do the adult stage. Yeah. Well, I will say the adult stage of a dragonfly is the most uh, effective predator on Earth, right? Mm -hmm. And they are very, uh, very, very agile. Yes, and uh, yes. there's also it's also about, about the jaws of the uh, the nymphs. They they mm -hmm. uh, like it's also interesting to note that the uh, the mouth parts of insects originally evolved from uh, legs. Like yeah. app appendages, and you can and you can clearly see that in the nymph stage of the dragonfly. Like if you look closely at the jaw of the of the nymph dragonfly, they look like legs, just fused. That's all they look like. Yeah. Crab mouth parts are like that too. It's like crabs yes. mouth parts. They look like just like tiny crab legs. Yes, exactly. We have a question. It says some or statement. Some birds have grown too heavy to fly. I wonder if any insects have done likewise. A lot of oh yeah, many. Yes. Yeah. Although it, it, I think it's, it has less to do with being too heavy. I think it's just they they just don't, they just don't. I don't know why they uh, lost. Them. Maybe they just decided to go full like camou camouflage well, like, and just well, yeah. too heavy. But like ants decide. I, mean, I always had the wings to mate with and get rid of them afterwards. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, I, I've, I always wonder why an animal would would lose the ability to fly, but it takes a lot of energy. It takes mm -hmm. a lot of energy when you don't if you don't have to and don't right. It's yes, like 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 why use the wings when you can just lay raise two million babies. That's mm -hmm. my goal. Next slide. Here we go. I'd uh, again. I, g I gave an example of uh, uh, a debate about the origins of the met uh, metamorphosis in uh, in the comp in the hollow metabolous insects. This is not settled and, at all. <laughs> no, exactly. No, exa exactly. Like there are like two main hypotheses. The uh, the one on the on the left is uh, is called the uh, D the D embryonization hypothesis, which says that the uh, like in the uh, in the hemi metabolus, or the, the, the insects that undergo partial partial metamorphosis, they have uh, in, in before the egg hatches. Within the egg, it's it's got there's there's something called the the pro nymph stage. And some people think that the pro nymph stage is like the precursor of the uh, the larva stage in uh, in uh, hollow met met metabolus insects. 
and then and then the the pupa is basically is basically the, the compressed stage of the nymph stage you can see like in in the in the, it's, it's colored orange where in the, in the middle you see the nymphs or the, the nymph instars it's basically compressed into the pupa uh, according to this hypothesis but on, on the right you have a different hypothesis which says that the uh, the pupa is basically a uh, uh, a derived late nymph and and that the larva are just specialized uh, nymph stages yes so uh, from what i have seen that it, the, the, there is a great support for the former hypothesis but it's still it's still a, a hotly discussed topic the details yes for, for the how yeah. this change happened and there's a uh, new studies and new research going into uh, limb development and just uh, hox genes and how they're uh, expressed in different insect groups at what stages. Mm -hmm. It's really going to help us understand how, uh, again, like we talked about wing development, but also the, uh, the, the structure of their mouth parts is, is just noted in the, uh, the, the limbs themselves and how they've been modified from, uh, uh, from their multi-legged ancestors to fill different roles in their uh in the the, the... sorry what I, I was just saying mm -hmm. yes oh okay yes. Oh, in their in their environment all right yeah let's see what are we looking at here okay also so somebody mentioned in the live chat that uh, mm -hmm. you've also a good example in centipedes where the the, the front pair of legs have evolved into these uh the jaws or the fangs where for sepules. Yeah. Yes. Listen, that what isn't that what we did too? Our gill arches modified into a mouth. Yeah, basically, yeah. And early. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we didn't turn ours into wings though. We sucked that no. way. I wish we mm -hmm. cashed in on that. Oh, I like this one too though. Um, let's see. Well, at the time we were, we, well, that time we were, we, we were, we were, we were still at the bottom of the food chain. Well, the, well, well, these guys, insect guys were at the top of the food chain, really. <laughs> we were still at the bottom. Yeah, we were, uh, we were still fishy swimming in the sea at this time. Uh, <laughs> with no jaw, with no jaws. Well, the, well, the, uh, well, the, uh, your were kicking, were kicking, were, ticking, were, were like eating us for, for a light snack. Mm -hmm. But you can see in, in this slide you can see uh, uh, again the complete tree of the uh, of the insects. But in, in yellow, those are the those are the ones that have complete metamorphosis, the hollow hollow metabola group. And they they have eleven Big orders. Butterflies. Yes. Yes, they, they have eleven these include eleven orders, but uh, there are four uh, orders that, that, that are included most species like a 1 million species are included in these four orders the uh, the, the coleoptera the beetles the lepidoptera the moths and butterflies and oh, oh moth is misspelled oh, all right sorry about that um and diptera the true flies including mosquitoes and then of course the uh, the group we are interested in the hymenoptera the sawflies wasp bees and ants and we, say, we're going to give a shout out to the Hemitera. There's a lot of Hemitera out there too. So when it comes to the Terry Goda side of things, uh, mm -hmm. we uh, are sorry, the, the Hemi Metabolist side of things, ter, uh, no, the Hemitera are on top, on top of the game. <laughs> Off yeah. topic, I just want to say. And, I the, and the Hemi, are, are the Hemitera uh, the, the, the true bugs? True bugs, or? yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Off topic, I just want to say. Bugs, the cicadas. <laughs> I just want to say I'm a lousy speller. Every time I try to write insects and uh, search, I I get the the S and the C backwards. And that's a, a whole different search engine altogether. Yeah, I uh, I sometimes my fingers move faster than my brain. I think is part it's of like, the problem. Yeah, I think that's yeah. probably what happened with the word moths. There is fingers faster than moving. But like I said, yeah, yeah. So insects with the C and the S switched to it's a whole different story. <laughs> Of course, this this image does not do Coloptera uh, justice either. It, it, Coloptera not mm -hmm. only is as uh, the makes up the majority of all insects, Coloptera makes up the majority of all animals. <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> exactly. I, I, I would guess that they couldn't uh, do it on scale because it would, it would take up most no. of the image. If Why? They did it by scale, yeah. They're just buying their time till we leave the planet so they can take over. And yeah. like the vast majority of them are small, black, and indistinct, too. So people send me pictures of a black beetle, say, hey, what, what kind of beetle is this? It's like, oh. <laughs> but yeah, beetles could be, yeah, if we do a show on beetles like we're doing on uh, Hymenoptera today, we'll, we'll need a couple of days to complete it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. That's right. Yeah. Let's go. Uh, all right. All right. We've arrived. An we've hour. Arrived. An hour. Okay. An hour into the one hour into the thing, we got the backstory done. Now, time for the main mm -hmm. subject. All that yeah. prep work. Yeah. We're here. Yeah, I, 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 in, in this slide, I included the uh, at, at least. At the, there is confusing about the uh, some, some confusion about the etymology, but one one. Uh, source claimed that it refers to the the as married wings, where each wing or the, the, each front wing is locked with the hind wing by a series of hooks. Yeah. Okay. I'm, and I'm okay includes, that Yeah. And, and Hymenoptera includes uh, one one hundred and fifty thousand species, and probably way more undescribed ones. Yeah. And it's important to look at this uh, cladogram that we're that we're displaying here and understand that everything, only that very bottom one, is what people think of when they think of of Hymenoptera. The rest of these are all yes. saw flies and wood wasp, which are which people don't generally think of at all. Yet alone think of as Hymenoptera, but they're uh, we're actually quite uh, quite a, a selection, and uh, nobody did dabble into the soft flies a bit earlier on in the in the segment but soft flies are uh unique in uh, among hymenopterans that they uh uh leave their young to 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 on leaves to uh to live inside of them and and uh they're folivores basically uh again we call them uh leaf miners or uh leaf borers because of little tunnels mm -hmm. that they leave uh, no other hymenopterans uh, do that. Most of the rest, of, uh, most of the hymenopterans that you think of uh, hymenopterans are probably uh, yeah, bees, wasps, and ants, and they are all descendant from parasites. Yeah, it's it's a very interesting to, to see that the, the the at the base, like you see that the, the saw the saw flies are. Uh, not a monophyletic group. They, fo they mm -hmm. form the base of the Hymenopteran group. And they use their uh, ovipositors, as you said, they, they, they bore into plants. And as, there is one group, the, uh, the wood wasps. They use their ovipositor to uh, also bore into plants, but then they, uh, they deposit their eggs into like uh, <coughs> insect larvae to uh, as parasitoids. Like yep, like those, uh, yeah, yeah, parasitoids. Like those long yeah, yeah. beetles. <laughs> oh yeah, yes. And, and, and like, like you, you have parasites, but parasitoids is referring to when you, when when your parasitic behavior eventually uh, results in the death of your host. Like you make use of your host for some time, but eventually the host th still dies. That, 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 that's why it's called parasitoid instead of parasitism. Yeah. Yes. And uh, yeah, the host is, it depends on the, uh, the when the host dies, it's uh, parasitoid. It, it, the, 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 either like they use, they use the host as a baby chow. Yeah. Them, I think. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the the origins of the uh, of the stinger is as an ovipositor to uh, to paralyze prey so that they can lay their eggs on the prey, and the prey's still alive. And when the eggs hatch, they immediately start eating. Do, do, like like wood like in the, in this image, the wood wasps uh, they they don't have uh, stingers, and, and do, do they paralyze their prey? I, I don't think so. 
No, the wood wasps don't. I don't believe they. Don't, I don't think they no. need to because they they target uh, mostly beetle larvae living inside of tree bark underneath yeah. tree bark and uh, stuff like that. Yeah, I don't know on this this chart here. I don't know if, if it's a monophyletic or a, a paleophyletic thing, but which of these things? stays and takes care of the baby so the baby takes care of them which ones just this lady eggs and, and head out head out do they take, take care, care of the babies bees. some some of them do I, like, like i like i know bees and ants and, and that little tree there that they like they stay around and, and, and be a, like a, a good mom other ones are like okay i, I laid the eggs in you... this spider this dead spider bye, bye kids i'm off and did, like the the you uh, the you so like the, the ones you mentioned are you social that they, 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 like they they form colonies and they they care they, they, they take care of their larva the, those you social species occur later in the in the in the in the bottom where you see the uh, the, the apocrita the wasp waste yes yeah, so, so several of those are you social in independently yeah and you can see, like, like in in the, in the in the this slides, you can see the the two main groups are the uh, the uh, this the, the sawflies or the the, the, the paraphyletic sawflies, mm -hmm. and in the bottom you see the uh, the apocrita, where you have the appearance of a narrow uh, wasp waist. Like if you see a wasp, the uh, the uh, the section that divides the thorax Cardio. from the abdomen, yeah, they have like a very narrow waist, yeah, a very narrow waist. Mm -hmm narrow little area called a petiole uh yes. that uh kent hoven can't figure out how they how they live with such a tiny waist <laughs> right. i think we can move on to the next slide next Maybe next move... slide we had a question oh what's i think, you said, well, I think I, you, I, did you mean polyphyletic yeah I, that's the word I, yes. i'm a terrible pronouncer or pair of I don't know, worries. Maybe. Yeah, the, the the evolution of you 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 social behavior is po polyphyletic. It evolved multiple times independently, but if it's in the uh, yeah. the apocrita, yes. Like uh, like how 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 monkeys are are like a thing, or I don't know. I am off the top of again. But let's let's go on. We'll talk about that later. All right. All right. Uh, this is the this is a, the apocrita with within hymen. Like, as you mentioned before, the apocrita is uh, what most people would imagine wasps to be. Yes, mm -hmm. they are. They are. They are. The, they, they are the wasp group. Yeah, the, the, the other groups are the sawflies, and they are not considered to be wasps. The other sawflies, but in this group, the apocrita, you have the wasps, but also bees and ants. And it's also one, one again, one uh, thing about taxonomy is many terms are not uh, used uh, in a monophyletic sense. And there's, an, there's another example here. Ants and bees are, are each monophyletic, but wasps are not. So if you were to be cladistically consistent, we should consider bees and ants as subsets of wasps. Bees are basically... Uh, vegan wasps and ants are uh, a type of flightless wasp. Although there are there are some flightless wasps that are not true ants, like the velvet ant is an example of a a group that is, that's often called an ant or a fly uh, an ant, but it's just a different type of flightless wasp. And most ants have uh, the males are able to fly at least to some extent. You know? Oh yeah, 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 yes. Uh, the, 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 like in in the ants, like the females also fly sometimes, right? But when mm -hmm. they reproduce, yeah. yeah. The queens, the queens will be able to fly uh, mm -hmm. to do because that helps them spread out, so they're not repeat, competing with their their own offspring mm -hmm. colonies. Yeah, but there are certain groups of ants that will actually, uh, if the if the gr if the groups are close enough related, that they'll actually be able to. Uh, work together with multiple queens at different ends of their colony and cover more ground. Um, and that's also uh, polyphyletic because that different that's developing different clades of ants for different reasons at different times. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Some of the I also I also uh, mentioned some of the uh, the not notable groups within this uh, Apocrita uh, group. The, you have the Ignum Monday Wasp, which are like most parasitoid wasps are included within the uh, Ignu Monodae. Ignuminoidia. Oh, Ignuminoidia, sorry. Ignominia. Yeah, I, I was like, I, it's one of the words that I learned how to say when I first started doing this. That's like, I love saying now. <laughs> but, yeah. yeah. And there's also the, uh, another, another group called the Pro, Pro, Proctotrypomorpha, <laughs> which are, <laughs> are, which are, all, are some other parasitoid wasps. Like many, like many, uh, Groups within, within this Apocrita are parasitoids as well, and so, some of them have uh, lost uh, the parasitoid behavior. But, uh, and, and many uh, many of those are included within the uh, subset uh, called Acu Aculata of Aculata, which are the stinging wasps. But the, the, now now we have uh, the true stinger, which are which is basically a modified overpastor, as you have mentioned before. <laughs> yep. Yes. And Vespids are probably the uh the the most badass of the true uh uh mm -hmm. aculata. They're like you get that's where your murder hornets are and uh all that good stuff. Now spider so wasp are, are oh, hornets so are hornets in this group or are they uh -huh. Ves so, yeah. Vespidae, yeah. See yes. where it says Vespidae? Yeah. That's you're gonna find All your right. uh, honey, uh, honey, not honey bees, uh, honey hornets. Uh, I had to pull up here. Mm. Mm. I think if you if you can look closely at the image shown, um, like the, the 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 groups that are uh, highlighted as as bold in bold letters are parasitoid, but the ones in normal letters. They are. They have lost the parasitoid behavior. Like Vespidae is one group that has lost the parasitoids. Although many, again, many are still predatory. They they consume. They hunt down insects. With many many, uh, well, like hornets are famous. Of course, they have, they hunt down, and they just they, they don't lay eggs inside the host, but they do hunt other insects. And if also ants and bees are also good examples of. Uh, 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 groups of wasps that have lost their uh, parasitoid behavior. Mm -hmm. I think we can probably go to the next one. Yes. All right. Let's see. That's some. That's some. Uh, one slide oh, here about, about the ants. <laughs> here we go. We talk about hell ants. Here we're talking about the. Here we're talking about the the uh, group that decide. You know what? I don't need wings. I'm in wood or in in a, in, a, in, a, in a leaf of a plant. Yeah. Like oh goodness. Yeah. A, or I'm gonna grow. I'm gonna grow mushrooms. Or I'm gonna. I'm gonna grow. grow or I'm gonna fall. It's called aphids. <laughs> they yeah. But so fly these guys innovated. Uh, Agriculture, uh, both mm -hmm. uh, uh, husbandry of a, a different species and uh, uh, farming crops of uh, fungus long, long before humans entered the scene. Now, I have learned something about, about ants watching the other channel that is <clears throat> some, so apparently, some queens are solo acts and the other ones are, are team players. Yeah, there's a, a lot of interesting facts about ants. Uh, one of my favorite channels is Ants Canada, um, where he teaches oh, you yeah. about. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm talking the... about. That's what, yeah, that's, 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 that's why I watch you for your, your sugar's life. Yes, Ants Canada is great. It talks about the ecology of all sorts of different species of ants. So if you're into that, you definitely should check it out, like me and Vandalia do. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, 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 it's been a while since he's done it, but like we, we talked about the bees, he has this little war in his background in his backyard of native ants versus invasive ants. Yeah, 
and there's mm-hmm. uh, I I did a uh, had a video on uh, the battle between ants and termites. Someone recorded in their backyard. It was pretty awesome. No, they, they go to war. Oh, yeah, I think termites. I think termites are the insects that are, are like they like they're the ones that the not mono, uh, monogamy. They they they, they like hey, they they get married and stay together f- forever. <laughs> no. no, the hell ants as we have on here are um, have these really unique jaws where they open. Uh, horizontally uh and open and close that which is unique among insect mandibles in general i think you meant i think you meant, for, you meant for, vertically that they uh, they uh, uh they for, vertical mandibles yes did i say it backwards oh, oh yeah <laughs> yeah vertical vertical mandibles not uh not horizontal yeah yeah and I, and I and I spelled mandible wrong in the slide. Sorry about that. I think mandible sounds just fine. Mandibles. <laughs> That's what we'll call them when they when they open vertically. <laughs> <laughs> if you ever if if we if we ever discover a new species, we can we can we can change, we can change this name. No. And uh, yeah, As this it, species will never get. Or the hell ants will never get to see on Ants Canada though, because they don't exist anymore. Yeah, they have. Yeah, they, they are a Cretaceous group. Yeah, they, 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 they are went extinct. Yeah, in the Cretaceous. And are they? Do we know anything about their uh, uh, colonies? Or like, are, were they? Did they form large groups, or were, the, were their colonies very small in size or number? I I believe the uh, the understanding is that they were uh, that they were living in uh, like mobile colonies mm-hmm. similar to yeah. uh to driver ants that's oh that was mm-hmm. my understanding of reading about them anyway yeah and there's also one one notable species called uh or, or one genus called fico mirma it was a uh like since we uh, uh, like for a long time, we understood that, that ants uh, have evolved from the uh, the wasps. So there was a prediction that uh, at early early fossil ants should have uh, had um, uh, a mosaic of traits between like they have this, they should have traits typical of modern wa- uh, of modern ants, but also some traits that ants have lost but are still present in uh, wasps. And Fico Mirma is a very good example of uh, an extinct ant that has the uh, modern, like some modern ant traits and also some traits associated with uh, the typical wasps, too. A good transitional species. Mm-hmm. It looks like these guys were starting, were starting to diversify dinosaurs or non avian dinosaurs around their last legs. <laughs> and somehow, and, and somehow uh, they. That somehow they managed to uh, av- evade and no, yeah, uh, avoid the uh, the asteroid impact like 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 we did. <laughs> so, bed, just to, to clear up something in the chat here, bed bugs are are insects. They're actually true bugs in the order Hematera. So, yeah, oh. they they are real bugs. I did not know that. Yeah. Are, 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 uh, what, what about lice, like uh, head lice? Are they also? Um, yeah, head lice are true insects or er, insects too. Uh, they are. And are they are they also in the Hem- Hemipteran group? No, they oh. are. What do they fall into here? Order. Us. Uh, Socodia, Socodia, which yeah. also includes bark lice, book lice. Yeah. So, so, so what does what this? But they are they uh, are closely they are closely related to the uh, the hemiptera, the uh, closer, uh, like a sister so, clade. Yeah, and so they are does, they are in the same in, in the same vicinity as the uh, the hemiptera. Yes. So what does formicide, formicide mean? Uh, 
It's a type I... of acid that they blast out of their head. I'm not sure. It means ant. For, uh, for, uh, formic cydia. Is that literally yeah, formic means... acid? Yeah. For, yeah. I, I, I think it's the other way. I think it's the other way around. I think the ants were named first, and then the uh, the acid was named formic acid. Yeah. I think ant, so. Which means ant acid. Yeah. And not ant yeah. acid like the like tums, but. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I never realized after until I was start watching the, the ants kind of thing how how vicious ants can be when they're eating. <laughs> they find something and like they grab it and, and and go. Yeah. Yeah. Also, also interesting to note about for, formic acid. It's it's also uh, one one of the main. Uh, uh, compounds that uh, forms the uh, citric acid uh, cycle or at, the, or at least in, in in close proximity to the citric acid cycle it's like in, in the cent in the center of our uh, metabolism with this the citric acid and the formic acid and uh, 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 su su succinate and such yeah it's a very it's one of the one of the, the main components in our in organic chemistry and, and ants just and, and, no. and ants just use it to to make their acid sprays. Yeah. Now, are all three of these colored blocks still alive? Or oh, which ones? The the, the I, yellow, the the the, 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 the pink, or the bright green the... block box there is extinct, and the light mm -hmm. green is like uh, the basal uh, group. Yes, so. the stem. Stem ants, yes. The stem ants are the in the in the green and uh, light bluish or cyanish color. Yeah, and the in the bottom the bottom you see the, the orange. I think those are the yeah those are, those are all still alive. Extent. That's the extent. Yeah, extent groups, ants. yeah. Yeah. And some of the bees. Here Yay, we go, bees. bees. Now these guys, at least most of some of them, decide. You know what? Instead of instead of eat, eating things, let's let's go after let's go after these new things called uh, angiosperms. Yeah, let's get mm -hmm. some. Let's collect some sweet stuff out of these flowers instead of, instead of hunting parasites. And you'll see, like like uh, other uh, closely related clades to bees are also uh, tend to be pollinators. There's a lot of wasps and ants for that matter that also do uh, the pollination function, but uh, mm. bees kind of decided it was a full-time job. So I think, I think I do wanna, like, um, like, like to uh, which, which species uh, spe uh, are highly specialized. I think several bees are highly specialized to one species of uh, Mm -hmm. uh, flowering plant, right? Or, or yeah, not. especially uh, a lot of these ground bees. The flower, like uh, the the flower, will be specially uh, uh, positioned and and shaped that uh, to only be mm. pollinated by one specific clade of bees. Uh, there are some of our some of our uh, cash crops, uh, it, or some of our historical crash crops, have been. Uh, pollinated by a single species of bee. I don't remember the, the name of the one that, uh, that pollinates pumpkins, but it's the only one that can do it. Hmm. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. And how do, do we, like, uh, and we, do we pollinate pumpkins uh, differently now or? I, I don't, I'm not sure. Uh, I do, I think it's the only bee that can do it. I don't, I, I think there may be other insects that are able to do it. Mm -hmm. Um, no. Which of these, which of these uh, colored blocks are our own patriotic American ants? I think they are in the uh, the, the second group, the Apidae, right? What are patriotic ants? Yeah, the ones that, they're native to like. Oh, they're, oh, they're oh, you meant, oh, 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 oh! I, I thought you meant the honeybee. Oh, you, I, yeah. The, like the we're, we're talking about invasive versus native bees. Like which ones are are. Homegrown well, American Apa Day is where we find uh, the honeybee, yeah, hun yeah, the European honeybees. But there's more so than there. There's the, the bees are further divided into like long tongue bees and short tongue bees, and 
uh, they, whether they're they live in groups with this many individuals or that many individuals. Some of them uh, do different functions. There are ones that actually uh, uh, stick their stab their tongue through certain parts of the flower in order to make it uh, make it produce nectar. A lot of mm -hmm. a lot of weird behaviors uh, depending on what. Uh, what group evolved where and in and, and what vicinity to what types of flowers the uh, interlinking between bees and the flowers they pollinate is just uh, it's unbreakable it's uh and it's scary that it's that we're losing so much diversity and on the uh okay. wait 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 you're saying that that the animals and the things they grow up with are, are inter interchangeable like like a, like a web of life and stuff oh yeah yeah, like a big web of life. Also, oh, right. oh, one thing I can also mention is on, on the left, you can see the image uh, uh, from uh, from a uh, re reference to a paper called Dy Dynamic Microbiome Biome Evolution in Social Bees. It's a, it's a, this paper hypothesized that... Uh, mm. Like, a, like a, we, we know that bees evolved from wasps, but it's also thought that the, that the bees, the ancestors to bees, were predatory wasps. But they, they hunted down insects. And the hypothesis is that the, these insects that they originally ate were uh, covered in uh, pollen. Uh, and, uh, and, and, th and this pollen also had uh, some of the uh, uh, sort, of, sort of kind of microbiome associated with it. So, and that's how bees acquired the micro the gut microbiome that it allowed them to eventually transition over to pollen exclusively so that's how they made the switch to from from eating insects to eating pollen fantastic according to this paper yeah and they just and of course they just had to be nice and for and help help spread help and help like ha help the flowers have sex i mean it was, it was like an instinct <laughs> like uh, mm -hmm. for, like, for, for all this nice little stuff we'll, we'll, we'll help you have more babies yeah thank you for carrying my gametes to my lover <laughs> do, do do all do all bees have these uh thick Thick uh, hind legs for carrying pollen around. I think that is a characteristic of bees, uh, specifically. I think so. Mm -hmm. until I, like I, some, I some, of, some, some of them have, some of them have very large, uh, thickened uh, hind legs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For the longest time, I I never knew they actually ate pollen. I thought it was just a, a byproduct of going to flowers. I didn't know they were after that too. I thought. Oh, they go after, they, after they, the sweet. Yeah. I, 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 they I go think they, the nectar. They, they, yeah. I, I think, I think um, like, all of them eat pollen, and uh, and many uh, also grab the nectar. Or, or, do, or, do, or do all bees also eat the nectar, too? Well, the nectar is what they use to make food for their, for their babies. Mm -hmm. Also, also so, pollen, right? Like, they all, they have, yeah. like, uh, they have, they, they have, they have uh, honey sacks and, and also pollen, pollen uh, oh, pouches chambers. on their back legs. Yeah, like yeah. The, the structure of the back legs are just to, got designed to carry the pollen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And do like you, you, you also have uh, bumblebees. Apparently, as a set, like you have honeybees and bumblebees. Do, do like bumblebees don't make honey, right? No, bumblebees they don't make don't honey. Make honey. No. But they they they, they, well, they do they do eat uh, they do eat uh, mm -hmm. the the nectar and pollen. But they also make uh, they also make nests from wax, right? The bumblebees they make waxy waxy shells. Yeah, under so. underground too is where yeah. we'll mm -hmm. find I, bumblebees. Yeah, too. I remember when I first a little official bumblebee. I was like like that's a fat bee. Yeah, they are fat and fuzzy, cute. <laughs> and do they sting? I think they sting, right? Huh? Bumblebees. Bumble bumblebees can sting, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Bumblebee is there. Yeah, and, 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 so, and there are also some of the st- uh, you can also see in the image on the uh, on the left that uh, there are stingless stingless bees. Well, and there's when it comes to really, bumblebees they're, they're... too, it's some of the, some bumblebees will do like a like like a cuckoo bird does, and uh, like you have their somebody else take care of their babies for them. They'll hmm. actually lay their. Oh really? Thank you. Like abandon their kids. Like yeah, they're actually call called services on. They're actually called Double cuckoo CPS. bumblebees. Mm-hmm. Like, is there is there a child protective services for 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 insects and stuff? Mm-hmm. We call <laughs> for abandonment issues. Child abandonment. All right. Yeah. There's why I was. A little small here. A little small, yeah. Uh, it was like I could zoom in on these things, but. but you, I, I can see some of the names. You have the uh, Marciane and Lepti, uh, Leptinale. The one, the one in blue. And then you have a, a green group. So the green is paramphyletic, but you have also uh, Formicoids. Uh, formicoids, the, uh, uh, the biggest subset of ants. Is there, is there a, do you know any, like, I, I, this is not, not something that I am familiar with, but do you know what the main differences is between the, the, like, the, the black group and the, and the early diverging ants, like the, the one in yellow, uh, Bui? No, I, unfortunately, I do not. I guess I need to watch mm-hmm. more Ants Canada. Um, mm-hmm. I don't, as far as how ants are divided up, I, 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 um, I don't really, studied too much into it honestly uh but yeah i do recommend ants canada <laughs> now yeah. go ahead well i was gonna say i i, I thought and you remember that that scene in the one of the bad indian jones movies the fourth one where they that guy got yeah where they, where and, they had safasu in south america that was weird and they they took directed body into to a giant into their into their hill. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, no, I remember. Yes. Oh yeah. And yeah, they, and they lived. They, those those ants were so bizarre because they lived like driver ants, but then they also had a mound like uh, like fire ants. So they were like, and they call he called them Safasu, which is a, an African word. I'm not. I can't remember which uh, group it's from, but for dri- their word for driver maybe ants. Maybe they are. Uh, maybe they are yeah. Africanized ants. <laughs> And they, uh, the South America does have some pretty wicked ants. Uh, they've got the uh, the bullet ant, which is uh, quite mm-hmm. potent. Uh, some people consider it the most painful sting of any member of the insect kingdom. Uh, this specialized soup that they've been that uh, our hymenopteran friends have been cooking up since the Triassic is finally, uh, Finally, ready for injecting into humans, and that's going to make you scream. Uh, like, uh, uh, the bullet ants are from South America, right? Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. is, is, is well, was this perhaps a, a defense against the ant eaters of South America? Like the painful thing. Yeah, the, against uh, there because there's a lot of uh, insectivorous creatures crawling around the jungles of South America that these guys would be uh, benefiting uh, from with their potent sting. But bullet ants are also, uh, they live in the trees, so they're arboreal. Uh, mm-hmm. And there are ants like the silky anteater that, are, that, that specializes in, or specialized in targeting arboreal ants. So that would not surprise me in the bet that they had and- a and I might be getting, and I might be remembering this wrong, but you can learn more about the the anteaters and other zenarthrans and our and me, me and Nessus chat about <laughs> zenarthrans. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yes. We, we, we did it. We did it last year, I think. The uh, oh, the, yeah. the zenarthrans. Yes. Like, all all coming back together. All coming together again. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, it's all coming together. Yeah, and they're the ones that um not the Zothans, but they're the ones that that go at like like the army ants, the ones that go 
marching along and killing everything in sight. Oh, yeah. Yep. Actually, uh, uh, like a, that, do they have special? Do they have like they, they probably have special names for different casts of ants? Like you have the ants that, that carry stuff around, and you have the art, the uh, the soldier ants that will. Yeah, I, I know that yeah. they have they have super majors, minor majors, regular ah, majors. Yes. That. Do, I'm, I'm sorry to have to bail on you, but my ride just uh, just arrived. Oh, oh no so. worries. It's been I think, I think, I think it's, 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 it has been one and a half hour. It's a very, very that's a very, a very good talk already. So yeah, yeah. yeah we only had two slides to go, anyways. So. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we'll, we'll wrap it up for you. All for right. Sure. Yeah. Care. If you haven't done it yet, go go check out Bree's channel, Hive Science, every Saturday, and the, check out the reruns on the other week days of the week. Because he, because he, because he, he can do what I can't do. He can break up his show into the bite-sized pieces. All right. So what's on what's on this page? I think that this is just. Uh, I think it's an, an, another another uh, of the Hymenoptera. Hy more more simplified, right. I think. Yeah. Ah, and finally. And I'm not familiar about this slide. Um, it seems to be. It seems to be to highlight a relationship between ant species and a few wasp species. Oh yeah, maybe, maybe it's it's just uh, sh showing us how some are some parasitoid wasp infects some of the ant species, I think. But uh, I'm, I'm not familiar with this picture, sorry. Uh, uh, oh. oh, anything, anything you want to say before we, we wrap it up? Anybody, anybody have any questions in chat before we... Bree's gone, unfortunately Bree's gone because we talk forever, but yeah. if you have any questions in the chat before we go, now's your chance. I don't see any any other questions. I think. Oh, I somebody says. I guess. I guess bed bugs in the in a general is is a general ambiguous term. I, I don't. I don't know about. I don't know about a bed box. Like, see, see, maybe bed box. Uh, I think. I think bed box specifically refers to one. Yeah, it, it, it does refer to one specific group of insects. But maybe that maybe it's not a, a strictly monophyletic group as possible. I'm not I'm not sure about that. Right, so are there also it it the Wikipedia article does say that that many uh, many other other insects like uh, like cockroaches are sometimes confused for bed for bed bugs too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So anything coming up on your channel that you, that you want to advertise? Uh, no, not on my my channel, but uh, I I do. I'm always active on Jackson Jackson Reed's channel. Right. Uh, if if but up your channel, if you haven't seen it yet, ch check out his uh, nuclear power video. He he took he took he took my he took my episode of that and made it much more manageable, bite sized and manageable. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 so somebody, Steve uh, and Eddie. Yes, yeah, so, so Steve. Steve was just saying uh, it relates to the sentence before. Oh, yeah, that we, the sentence before was uh, bed bug. Bed bugs aren't insects; they are eight-legged mites. But I think we already responded to that uh, comment before. Yeah, they did. Uh, bed bugs are insects. The uh, yeah, the ones that bite you. Yeah. Well, channel coming up next Saturday. Me and. Me, Tony Reed, and maybe RJ are going to be talking about how to find these sources. That if you have a creationist or something that you want, you don't know, and you want to track down what that what they say is right or wrong, we're, we're going to teach you how to find those sources out out there in the, the internet world. Mm, this is a very good topic. Yeah, you, you can you, you can teach you can teach uh, other people how to uh, find information by the, for themselves. It's a very good uh, good discussion to have. Yeah, but until until then, never stop learning and enjoy the randomness. We'll see you next week. Bye.